And even skin pigmentation, or what we call hyperpigmentation for short, is a very common skin complaint, especially in Asian skin phototypes where we have higher melanin production. Hi, I'm Dr. Angeli Yong, board certified dermatologist and dermatological surgeon. In the following video, let's look at what causes hyperpigmentation and how to prevent them. Hyperpigmentation is a generalized term used to describe pigmentation of the skin. And this unwanted pesky pigmentation can occur in the form of discrete pigment, ill-defined pigment, or just blotches of skin, typically in more sun-exposed areas such as the face, decolletage, arms, and legs as well. Again, patients with darker skin phototypes such as Fitzpatrick scale type 4 to type 6 are more at risk or prone to hyperpigmentation given the higher production of melanin in the skin. There are various types of pigmentation and they range from very discrete pigment we known as solar antigens, or lentigo for short. So solar antigens happen as bigger, well-defined discrete patches that happen over sun-exposed areas such as the cheeks, sometimes over the arms and the legs as well, and this happens with over uh, time cumulative UV exposure. There's also another form of pigmentation that's very common, known as melasma, and this typically happens in darker skin phototypes, especially more common in women. So melasma is an ill-defined type of pigmentation occurring typically over the malar cheek area, sometimes over the lateral parts of the forehead, extending down the sides of the face as well, and they can be epidermal and dermal in nature. Melasma tends to also have a hormonal component and genetic predisposition. Another type of pigmentation would be that of dermal pigmentation. There's also different types of dermal pigmentation, such as acquired Horis nevus, nevus of Ota. These are deeper dermal pigmentation. Sometimes they're more stubborn to treat and need more laser sessions to treat them compared to epidermal pigment. Finally, there's also a very common entity known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This occurs typically after maybe an acne spot settles down or even after eczema, for example. So typically, there is predeceding inflammation of the skin that can happen from acne or even like a cut, a burn or eczema. And then this results in uh, the development of a shadow pigment area once the redness fades. This is due to actually melanin production and typically in order to treat PIH, the options may vary when compared to other traditional pigmentation. Pigmentation basically increases from a number of factors such as UV exposure, sometimes trauma, and basically it's an increase in melanin production by melanocyte cells in the skin. The number one cause of hyperpigmentation has to be sun. So basically, sun produces UV rays, and UV rays actually trigger melanin production. Hence, usually your best friend would be a sunblock. So adequate sun protection with adequate SPF, at least from SPF 40 to 50 and UVA protection is important to protect your skin from the harmful UV rays that trigger the worsening and darkening of pigmentation. Hormones can again be very tricky. So hormones are basically one of the etiological agents for the formation of melasma. Hence, we commonly see it in women with a little bit of hormonal imbalances at a time in their life. So basically, melasma is also known as the mask of pregnancy because hormonal changes in pregnancy with the fluctuation in estrogen and progesterone levels can give rise to increased risk of melasma formation. And this is the first time you may notice melasma in your life. It can also basically be triggered with women who are oral contraceptives as well as other forms of hormone replacement therapy. And it's also typically again triggered around the perimenopausal age group where estrogen and progesterone levels again fluctuate rapidly. Again, age is another common factor because with age, we accumulate more sun exposure. Over time, there's chronic UV exposure as we get older, hence the risk of pigmentation formation also increases. At the same time, the number of melanocytes actually decrease, but the remaining melanocytes expand in size and are actually able to produce more focal pigmentation, giving rise to this pesky pigmentation known as sunspots or age spots. Fourthly, we have skin injuries and inflammation. So common skin conditions such as eczema, psoriasis, for example, in the inflamed state will look red. However, as you treat them and they settle down, they can give rise to a darkening of the skin or discoloration, and patients are oftentimes very bothered by that. There's also post-acne hyperpigmentation. So when acne spot settles down, the inflamed acne papule or pustule becomes a darkened spot. And that's what we call acne post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So again, any form of inflammation in the skin, be it in the form of acne, eczema, psoriasis, or even from cuts, burns, and injuries such as a surgical scar, can give rise to a stimulation of the melanocytes production of melanin, and this can give rise to hyperpigmentation. Now again, with PIH, I mentioned earlier in this video that it's very tricky to treat because it depends on the underlying causation. Unlike traditional forms of pigmentation such as lentigenes or sunspots, 
which can be treated effectively with lightening creams such as bleaching agents or even other gentle creams like azelaic. We have to be very careful if the hyperpigmentation is caused by an inflammatory skin condition such as eczema or psoriasis because the skin is hypersensitive. So the skin is actually eczema by nature. Using a lightening cream inappropriately too early can give rise to actually an aggravation of the eczema and then that will produce a cycle of hyperpigmentation. Hence with PIH, it is a little bit more tricky. It depends on what the underlying cause is due to and there must be judicious commencement or treatment for lightening, ensuring first that the preceding condition is well stable and well managed before trying to lighten that condition. Finally, certain disease states and medications can also give rise to hyperpigmentation. There are certain drugs such as anti-malarials, antibiotics and certain chemotherapeutic agents that can give rise to hyperpigmentation. There are also certain disease states or metabolic conditions that can increase the development or darkening of the underarms, the neck area as well as hyperpigmentation at the same time. If you like our video on hyperpigmentation and what causes it, don't forget to watch our next video on how to treat and prevent hyperpigmentation. Don't forget also to like and subscribe to our channel.